Good day, ladies and gents. I'm Professor T, and welcome to another edition of The Business Startup Journey. Our business owners and entrepreneurs are actively learning how to start a business with little or no money and no experience. I'd like to invite all of our listeners to subscribe to the podcast channel for weekly episodes. I would also like to encourage you to visit professort.monthache.com and download our study guides. The website is listed in the channel. The study guides will be uploaded weekly and will reflect our podcast series. It's also important that you obtain your free personalized business portfolio by subscribing at the bottom of our page at professort.monfache.com. This will give you access to the documents needed to build your personalized business portfolio. Okay, team, now that we paid the bills, let's get ready to rock and roll. Ladies and gents, welcome, welcome, and thank you for tuning back in to another episode. So today our topics will be skills and traits of an entrepreneur. I want to remind everyone to either like, share, comment, follow, or subscribe below, and let's get ready to rock and roll. So I chose this topic because I wanted everyone to be aware of the skills and traits of an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is also business owners, so we need to know how to identify whom we are and whom we are developing and whom we're dealing with. So let's talk about the entrepreneur. My number one credibility that I give to an entrepreneur is the ability that they have to notice opportunities all around them. So whatever's going around them, they're paying attention inside of a restaurant, inside of a business, outside in the park, anywhere they go, they pay attention to the opportunities that's all around them. Ladies and gents, not only do entrepreneurs, and when I say entrepreneurs again, I'm talking about you, the business owner, not only are you able to pay attention to your surroundings, you're also able to take advantage of untapped opportunities. Now pay attention to this slide because this slide is going to help you understand what those untapped opportunities are. Two categories, one, perception. The second one is action. When you talk about perception, we're talking about using your senses to develop awareness and understanding. So you're developing an awareness that there's a need that needs to take place and you begin to try to understand it. The ability to see, hear, or become aware of something through your senses. Use your senses to develop your perception. The second one is action. Something done or performed. Now that you're aware of what's going on through your senses and your perception, what action are you bringing to the plate? What action are you doing to create change for this untapped opportunity? Entrepreneurs are dreamers who deliver. We allow our imaginations to run free. We entertain wild ideas and look for opportunities everywhere we go. Not only do we identify the opportunities that are around us, we use our imagination to create or recreate what's already in place. We dream big, but we do use innovation to change the scale of what things look like and to present change in any area. We cannot be that person that everyone wants us to be. We have to be innovative, different, and willing to deliver. So when we place an entrepreneur into a restricted environment, these environments restrict all of their traits that allows them to be who they are and to be innovative and to develop. Entrepreneurs tend to work outside of structures to create their own environment, their own structure from scratch and development. And this is where you get the business innovation process. Entrepreneurs lie in a realm that allows them to be curious, display levels of enthusiasm, to display tenacity, to use their high energy, and to build onto their self-confidence. These are all areas within a realm that allows to build onto their personality and their DNA traits. The research is out on were any of these areas inherited or were they learned? 
or is it a bit of both? My goal is not to influence your thoughts. I'm going to present you with different things and then you can make your own conclusion whether these traits were inherited, learned, or a bit of both. Now another area of the DNA traits calls for a lot of cooperation, collaboration, and the ability to survive the cultural sensation that defines our civilization. They have to live within the realm, cooperate, collaborate, and also survive. The next area we're going to discuss is self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is the power to produce an effect, the ability to produce a desire or intended result. This can all be embodied into the four areas I have listed on the slide. Effectiveness, productiveness, efficiency, and worth value and ability. I want to focus on what Dr. Bygrave gave to us in a quote. He goes on to say, don't spell out everything for them. You let them wrestle with it. You want to see how far they can go wrestling with their ambiguity and develop their own models. So his quote was really for development. It was calling for an innovative process within an entrepreneur that develops a business owner and to expand on that. And for that, we are extremely grateful for. The seed planted by our parents and nurtured early in life. Now this is very monumental when you're moving forward because we have to pay gratitude to that and we have to pay homage to all these areas that we were developed in early in life. Now, when I'm working with many different business owners, I tell them to stay true to yourself. Although the culture may call for one way, if truth in yourself calls for a different road, then take that road. Because what's gonna happen is you're gonna see original content coming from everything you do. The business innovator describes close relationships with both parents. Some entrepreneur benefits from a successful childhood career. The ability to identify opportunities is a common practice dating back to childhood of successful businessmen and women. Now these areas teach us that the relationships that we have early on with our parents allows and shapes who we are as entrepreneurs. The research shows that many of these entrepreneurs spend their whole life still trying to please their parents, normally trying to please the parent even after death. They also describe close relationships with parents, but troubled relationships during their childhood. The research also goes on to show that they're encouraged and allowed to explore the limits of their capabilities as a child. So these are really good aspects to understand and to identify when we're deciding who we are personally as a business owner and an entrepreneur. And it also goes to say that we inherit the work ethics of our parents due to these close relationships that we've had with them dating back to childhood. Entrepreneurs by nature should be able to adjust the price of their business or their services to reflect what the market is offering. They can make it as low as possible or make it as high as possible and still remain comfortable. This is an easy indication to determine if you're an entrepreneur by nature. Agility. This is the act of spotting and seizing opportunities by keeping your eyes open. Every small business today that will be successful needs to display some level of agility. And remember, it's the act of spotting and seizing opportunity by keeping your eyes open. Listening and free thinking. Receiving input and thinking outside of the box. So we need to be agile and able to develop and grow and expand our business and to be competitive against those big box companies. How can I use agility within my business? Agility can be used to outwit large opponents and increase revenue and profit. This is all necessary to grow your business. We need to have the ability to move, think, understand quickly and easily 
so that we can grow and scale our business. Because where a big box company desires approval from seven different levels, since we're smaller, we can make that decision, maneuver around the competition, and close the deal. So also think, how can I be agile within my business? Entrepreneurs are open to receive input from people who help to tweak their product or service. Input and data and recommendations are the most necessary things for a business owner. In order for us to do unusual things, we need help. We need help from people within the industry and we need help from our consumers. The element of surprise is part of our secret. And to build that surprise, you're going to need advice. Let your imagination run wild. Entertain nutty ideas and look for your business angles everywhere you go. Use the advice from others to create those business angles. The skills and traits of an entrepreneur boils down to one concept, and that's preparation. Preparation is key. That's how we move forward, and that's how we will be competitive in the market. I want to share with you another quote, and this one is from Herbert Jan. Now he goes to say, I had to create opportunity for myself through exercise, reading, and learning. I had to be ready when the time came. Prepare yourself physically, mentally, when you're working to build your platform and your business structure. Ladies and gents, I wanna encourage you to eliminate the fear and doubt. Everything you do moving forward will change the shape and scale of your business. So I wanna thank you guys for taking the time to listen to my presentation on the skills and traits of an entrepreneur. Please everyone, like, share, comment, follow, or subscribe below. All right, ladies and gents, thank you again. Enjoy your day, continue to build on your business, and I'll see you on our next episode of the Business Startup Journey.